Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the session Data Structures. Let me introduce myself and Tulsi Chitra, Associate Professor, Department of CSIT, MLR Institute of Technology. Today, we are going to discuss about the session on data structures. First, we will see the overview of data structures, what concepts we are going to discuss today. We will be discussing about the linker list. And then we will be seeing about what are the advantages and disadvantages over the linker list. Then we will be seeing the difference between array and linker list. Then types of linker list. Then we will look in, into the single linker list concept. And the definition of a linker list. Then we will be seeing how you are going to declare the structure. Then discussing about the single linker list and its operations. And at the end, we are going to discussing about creating of three nodes for single linker list. This is the overview where we are going to discuss about the linker list. Now, let us discuss about what is the linker list. Linker list is nothing but it is similarly like an array and it is a collection of similar data elements but it is dynamic in nature. As we have discussed in the previous class that array is a static data structure. Array is a static data structure while coming to the linker list it is a dynamic data structure. And what are the advantages of this linker list over an array? It overcomes the limitations of array. What are the limitations we have seen in arrays or it is one is it is static in nature and we are going to have some memory leakage problems is available in arrays and then insertion and deletion is another difficulty in arrays. This will be overcome with the limitations of our linker list. And what are the disadvantages that comes under linker list? The disadvantages are here we do not have direct access to the particular element. Why? Because it is going to allocate the memory dynamically. Because of that, we are unable to find a particular element index. Because of that, we can't unable to access the elements directly in the linker list. And one more, it is it requires some additional memory for the pointers. As we as we are going to see how the structure of linker list will be, this will be like this. It is going to have two parts. One is representing the data, and another one is representing the address. Because of this, it is going to take some extra memory. And this is this address part will be storing some pointer values. Because of this, there will be some wastage of wastage of memory will be there. This is the disadvantages you come across the linker list. And while coming to the differences we will see here about arrays, arrays versus linker list. The first difference is it is static in nature. Means when you are going to specify the size of array, suppose I have declared it as A of 5. In this case, the size will be fixed. The size of this one will be fixed. That is nothing but the static data structure and here when you are going to see about the dynamic data structure here we are not giving the size this will be allocated at runtime here the memory will be allocated at runtime how much memory that is required for us that will be done at runtime because of that it is called a dynamic data structure and the next difference between array and data structure is that is linker list is it is necessary to specify the number of elements during the declaration. That is why I have given you the previous example A of 5 I have specified the size should be given before itself and here we are not specifying any size for the number of elements and when you want to specify the number of elements to be read that that could be done by the dynamic data structures. Here we are going to have different dynamic memory allocation functions or date based on that we are going to do it. 
one in that is malloc function that is we are going to allocate the memory dynamically and the next one difference we are going to see about it is it occupies less memory than the linker list i told you we have an array array means it is a sequential storing of elements because of that you are not using any extra space for storing the address but here in the linker list we, if, when i am going to have a node in this we are going to have one extra space will be used for storing the address that means we are going to use pointers for storing the address in this right this is uh, this this will be telling you about it occupies less memory than the linker list and it occupies more memory where we are going to use the address for storing the next location where we are going to have the extra memory is going to be used here and the next one insertion and deletion operations involves data moments where i want to insert an element into my array i need to shift the locations and based on that i can insert that data into the particular location suppose a of 1 but in linker list insertion and deletion operations are flexible why because we are going to allocate the memory in different places because of that we are we don't have we no need to shift anything just we are going to add the address of it and we make the connections to that because of that no need of extra data moments are going to be involved in the linker list these are the some of the differences we can find with array and linker list and we are going to see about different types of linker list here the first one is single linker list and the second one is double linker list and the third one is circular linker list these are all the classification of linker list and now we will be seeing about what is a single linker list single linker list is nothing but it is a linear data structure as of like an array array is also a linear data structure where it is going to have a collection of data elements that are going to be stored under contiguous memory locations contiguous memory locations and sing single linker list is also similarly like an array but here it is going to be differentiated little bit okay now it is an example of train look the, look into this this is an example of train this will be similar uh, to the representation of our single linker list where we all know that how the train will be train consists of compartments train consists of compartments and all the compartments are connected by using some links and where we are going to have the engine and we are going to have the last compartment from this the engine represents how we are, how the train is going to drive and the last compartment represents the last of the train and this links represents the how the compartments are connected from this we can uh, convert this train data structure into our linker list that is single linker list concept how this can be done just observe here the compartments can be represented with the name of nodes and the links are that is the connections which are made between the compartments are represented with links and the engine which you are representing is nothing but the head that means how the train is going to move uh, how the train is going to be moved based on the engine it is going to move based on that we are going to represent it as head and the last compartment if you don't have any other compartments that are connected to it that is nothing but the last compartment now this train comparison is going to be converted into the linker list in this fashion now we are going to define what a single linker list is a single linker list is nothing but it is a sequence of data items and each item of in the list is called a node and node consists of two parts one is data and address let us represent how the single linker list will be here a node consists of 
two parts one is data and address let us look into the diagram here this is the node where, it, where we are going to represent node consists of two parts one is data and another one is address now for example if i want to make four nodes and how we are going to make the connection between all these four nodes let us look into the example here i am going to have four nodes and how we are going to represent this in terms of a single linker list let us see we are going to consider the first node with the data element as 10 and the address of it is 2000 and the second node the data element is 20 and the address is 3000 and the third node it is 30 data element and the address is 4000 and the fourth node we, which you are going to have 40 and the last one we are going to represent with null. Now the first node which you are going to have that is going to be represented with the head and the last node which you are going to represent with last where you can identify the last node address we are going to store with the null value. Why? Because we do not have other nodes that are connected to the last node. This, uh, this says you that this is the last node in your single linker list. And if you see how we have made the connections between one node to the other, other node is here if I am going to have the node structure like this and here you are going to have the data value and other part which you are going to store the address. The first node I am taking the value as 10 and in the address part I am going to store the address of next node. Suppose I am going to have some 2000 means here this address will be stored into this location. Based on this a two nodes are going to be connected. Now, how you are going to write this or represent this in terms of the C, C language, how the node structure will be represented. Let us see the structure declaration for our node structure. This is the node structure. This is going to be represented in terms of our C language, where the struct is the keyword and node represents the node, that is the node structure which we have given, right? The node the type of the node which we have represented. This is the one which you are going to represent. Next, in this we have, I told you we have two parts in the structure where we are going to have the data and another one is the address. This address will be storing in terms of the pointer. That is why we are going to represent it as star next. And this part where we are going to represent that is struct node pointer next. This is representing the self-referential structure. Self-referential structure. That means self-referential structure is nothing but the structure which refers to itself. The structure which refers to itself is nothing but the self-referential structure. If you could observe here, struct node again we are representing. This is self, again we are calling the same structure once again and that is representing another structure. Suppose I am going to have the struct node, this is my node and the same structure I am going, going to call once again and here pointer next represents, that is pointer next represents where you are going to store the address of this particular node. Consider this is having address 1000 and this is having address 2000. Now, if I want to make the connection between these two, I need to store the address of this one into this. And here we are going to store the data values. Two nodes are going to be connected in this fashion. This is the thing where we have discussed. And here if you could observe, if you could observe, the data type can be any of these things, int, float, char and double. Different data types can be used for storing the data in your nodes. And coming to the single linker list and its operations. Here we are going to see different ADTs. Already we have discussed what is an ADT. ADT is nothing but it is an abstract data type abstract data type where you are going to hide the operations 
hide the operations in it. And when you are going to see the list ADT here, it is going to be consisting of data as well as the operations. Data is nothing but the group of elements. That means the data elements which you want to store in your linker list, those are nothing but the data. And the operations are, here we can perform different operations in the single linker list. In that, the first one is creation and the second one is insertion, third one is deletion, searching, concatenation, display or traversal. These are the different operations where you can perform on single linker list. And here, when you are going to see about the creation, based on the creation, you are going to create a node and we can store the data values and we are going to make the connection between different nodes that can be done by the creation like this way. And insertion, insertion, you can do the insertion of the nodes either at the beginning of the linker list or you can insert at the end or you can insert after a given element or you can insert before the given element anything can be possible and when we want to perform deletion if i want to delete a particular node that can also be done based on the beginning from the begin i can delete or from the end i can delete or from after a particular node i can delete or before a particular node also i can delete the nodes and searching. Suppose I am going to have the list of uh, the single linker list. In that, I want to search a particular element or particular element is present in the list or not. In that particular case, we are going to search with that key element and we can say that that key element is present in the list or not. And the concatenation, if you have given two single linker list, Based on that, we can concatenate. That means we can combine two single linker lists into a sing, uh, into a one single linker list so that we can display it as a single one. And the last one, display or traversal. In display, whatever the nodes you have created or whatever the insertions you <coughs> insertions you have done, based on that, we can able to display display all the elements in the single linker list. This is also known as traversing through the list. Display or traversal both are the same. Both are used for displaying the content in your single linker list. Now, we will see one example, not going for the generalization of single linker list. First, we will see how to create the three nodes in a single linker list, then we will be moving forward how to represent that in terms of the generalization. When we want to create three nodes for that purpose, first we need to declare our structure for our node creation. That is struct node. Struct is nothing but the keyword where you want to define your type definition and struct node followed by int data and this one is where you are going to use it for self-referential structure. This is the node structure where you are going to create. Based on that, you can see here in the diagram how it will be. This is the node structure where you have created with the data and address. Like this way, the node will be created. Next, for that, we want to create three nodes. Three nodes means I want to declare them as pointers. Why? Because it is going to store the address of it. That's why. I am taking three pointer variables that is first, second and third. These are the three, three pointer variables where I can store my three different node values into it. Now, when I am going to do this, how I am going to allocate the memory? As we discussed, the linker list is going to allocate the memory dynamically. That's why we need to use the dynamic memory allocation functions. Those are nothing but we are going to use malloc function for allocating the memory dynamically. For that, how I am going to allocate it? First, we are going to see the structure of it. Then we are going to discuss how we are going to allocate the memory for it. This is how the uh, syntax for malloc function. malloc function, this is the generalized syntax where we can represent the malloc function. Void pointer, 
this is a generic pointer we are not specifying any data type whatever the data type that is required for us that will be converted into that particular format by using type casting that's why here we are representing the void pointer it is a generic form based on the data type whatever you want to read that will be converted into that particular format and malloc is the function that is dynamic memory allocation function the size of data type that means we are going to specify the data type it is of if it is of integer based on that it is going to allocate the memory if it is of 4 bytes based on that it is going to allocate that memory and that address will be returned to that ptr this is the malloc function is going to do let us see one example here int pointer x here i am declaring my pointer value x with an integer data type in this case how the memory is going to be allocated for this and how we are going to use the malloc function and write the example let us see here int pointer in in place of void pointer we are using int star int star is nothing but we are converting our data type that means we are not specifying the generic one we are taking the integer type that's why we need to convert into int star that is integer type we are converting then ml of function we need to specify and size of data type size of data type in place of data type we are representing integer int we need to specify based on this what will happen it is going to allocate the memory based on this integer data type integer will take four bytes depending on the os that is if it is of 64 byte or 32 byte the memory will be allocated if i am going to consider 64 byte in that particular case integer will occupy four bytes of memory size of integer means four bytes according to that it is going to allocate four bytes of memory to to the x value that means x will not be getting the value directly it will be getting the address it will be getting the address that will be stored in x I, here one more thing when the memory is allocated from the dynamic memory allocation the memory will be allocated from the heap not from the other places it will be allocating the memory from the heap not from the stack or any other place right if the memory is available that will be allocated at, at, otherwise it is going to raise some error and based on the syntax now we can see how the memory allocation can be done for the three pointer variables let us see here we are going to take struct node pointer why because we are going to declare the structure for the node based on that we need to specify the data type here if you can see the previous example here the node structure which i have represented it as struct node here this is the type of data type which you are going to represent based on this based on this here we are specifying it as struct node star instead of int it is its type is structure that's why we are representing struct node star and the malloc function is as usual and size of a struct node size of represents the how much size that is required for our data type that much size it is going to allocate and here also we need to specify the data type the struct node is the data type that one that's when we are that's why we are representing struct node here now based on this the memory is going to be allocated from the heap that will be stored in the first in the similar way for the second and third pointer variables also it is going to allocate the memory separately now how you can store the values into the data as well as in the address part first the first step what we have written here first equal to struct node pointer malloc of size of struct node this is the one which you have represented previously now when you have done this what is going to be happen here it is going to allocate the memory like this it is going to allocate the memory in this node structure we have two parts one is representing the data and another one is representing the address or pointer value and here i am going to store the data value and here i am going to store the address initially we are going to represent with null if you don't have any other nodes we don't we are not making any connections because of that initially whenever whenever you are going to create a node it will be having the null value and here we are going to store the data value i told you it can be of any integer type 
or float value or character value or any double value anything it can be right now i want to assign some values to my data data part as well as i want to store something into my address also first we will store the values into our data part how we can do that let us see here i want to store 10 value into my data data part this one and i want to store i am not connecting anything that's why i am representing with null if i want to do this how, can, how i can write the statements in our c programming let us see this part this this complete node is representing with the name first that's why first arrow why because we are going to use the pointers because of that to access the members of your node we need to use the operator called arrow that is first arrow data that means this part this part that is first arrow data is going to be initialized with the 10 that means it is going to store the value of 10, 10 into this particular location and in the same way first arrow how i can access this location first arrow next this location is nothing but the next first arrow next equal to null right in a similar way if you have returned the second memory allocation this one in that particular case also it is going to allocate the memory if i want to store some value into this then i need to write second arrow data equal to 20 and second arrow next equal to null and one more is also there third arrow data equal to 30 and third arrow next equal to null for this also the memory should be allocated in first that is third arrow data we are going to store the value as 30 and third third arrow next we are going to store the value as null like this way this is created for the three nodes separately now how we are going to make the links between these three nodes let us look into this this is the first node this is the second this is the third node and while we are representing a particular node it is going to have some address also these are the addresses where we are representing for the first the address we have assumed these addresses address is 1000 this address is 2000 and this address is 3000 now if i want to make the connection from first node to the first list, first node to the second node what will happen let us look into this this is the first node where we are going to have and this is the second node where we are going to represent and this is the first node these are the data elements and the address and this is the first part and this is the address where we are going to represent and this is the second node the name of this node is second and this is address is 2000 the data which you are going to have is 20 and the address part we are going to have null now to make the connection between these two nodes what i need to do i need to store the address into this location which address i need to store i need to store this address what is the name of this node the name of this node is second now first i will be storing the address then we will be writing the statement first how i am going to store the address here here i am going to store the address of 2000 now what is the statement i can write here i can write the statement as this is nothing but first arrow first arrow what is the location this is next first arrow next equal to this one this name of this node is second that means we, ca we can write it as first arrow next equal to second that's why we have written the statement first arrow next equal to second to make the link between the first two nodes we have done in the similar way we can store we can have the link between first third node also into the second node how we can do this let us look, look into this here we have already represented the first two nodes already connected and the name of this one is third now how to make the connection between these nodes here initially this will be in terms of null now we need to make the connection between the third node and the second node now for that purpose this 3000 has to be stored into this location and at the same time we need to write some statement also here what is the statement we need to write it here that is second arrow next this is the node which is representing second and this is the node which is representing first right second arrow next equal to third 
based on this it is going to establish the link between the second and third nodes this is how where we are going to connect the three nodes based on this in the next session we will be discussing about the generalized representation of a single linked list let us see what is the summary we have seen what we have discussed in today's session we have seen the disadvantages and disadvantages of linked list then we have seen the difference between array and linked list then we have seen the different types of linked list that means single double and circular linked list and we have seen about what is a single linked list how we have uh, related a train example with the single linked list and we have seen so many things in the single linked list what is its definition and how we can declare uh, a single linked list by using the node structure and what are the different operations we can perform on the single linked list and at last we have seen how we have created the three nodes for a single linked list and make the connection between all all of those and in the next next session we will be discussing about the generalization of creating the nodes by using the single linked list thank you for today's session